So in this video, we're gonna do what's called the box problem. So another optimization example. So I've got an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. That's your standard size sheet of paper. And what I wanna do, I wanna find the value X. Okay, so find the value of X. So what we clipped out of each corner here, such that the volume of the box is maximized. So what do I mean by that? If I fold up, these sides here, it creates like a like a box type thing going on. I'll try my best to be artistic here. So it would create this hollow box here, right? Oh man, I'm being a little bit too artistic here, but you get you get what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we, so we want to figure out what value of X is going to maximize that volume, okay? So first thing I need to do, I need to know um, what the actual formula for volume is. For volume is uh, base times width times height, okay? So we already know that the height here is going to be X, okay? We just need to figure out how we're going to define the base and the width in terms of X. So all these corners here, like I said, we're cutting off X amount, okay? So that when we fold it up, it will be a um, height of X on each side. Now, what do we know? It's an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, right? So the entire length here is eight and a half, and the entire length here is eight and a half. The only problem is we don't have the entire length there, do we? So how do we figure out, so once again, the X is your height. Um, how do we figure out what that length in here is? Because it's not eight and a half um, inches. It's a little bit less than eight and a half. Well, how much less is it? Well, I have an X amount here and an X amount here. So I need to subtract away x minus x in there. So that's 8.5 minus 2x is how long this side is right here. Okay, makes sense. Now, the whole side here is 11. But if the whole thing is 11 and I need to take off an x here and an x here, what do I do to 11? I subtract 2x from 11. So this side here is 11 minus 2x. And um, this side here is 8x minus or 8.5 minus 2x. Okay. So my dimensions for the base is 8.5 minus 2x, and the dimensions for the height or the width is 11 minus 2x. Okay. So now I just need to multiply this out. So distribute. Uh, these first two here, uh, you can use a foil or double distribute, however you like to call it. And then once you distribute that, add a power of x to each term. And you're going to get 4x cubed minus 39x squared plus 93.5x. Okay. Once you do that, um, you've got your formula in terms of one variable. It's time to take the derivative. So the derivative with respect to x of the volume, the derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared. The derivative of negative 39x squared, bring the 2 out front, 2 times negative 39 gets you negative 78x. And then this is just going to be 93.5. So we have a parabola here for our um, function. Now, the parabola, um, it's a positive. So what do I know? I know... Um, it's going to look something like that, okay? So if I set it equal to zero, um, you can use your calculator or you can use quadratic formula. I don't care here. Just tell me what you're going to use. And um, you get 1.6 or uh, 4.9 for your solutions, okay? So this parabola, what it, what it looks like is it looks kind of like this. All right, now um, you've got a, a solution here and a solution here, okay? So what, is, what does that mean? The derivative is positive in some places, it's negative in others, and then it's positive, right? So we're going from an 
increasing function to a decreasing function to another increasing function. It's a cubic, okay? So I'm gonna use the first derivative test with my critical uh, numbers here, and I'm gonna see what I get. And if I plug in to my derivative, so pick a point, maybe if I pick x equal to zero, then v prime of zero gets me zero, zero, and then positive. So that's a positive number. A positive number produces an increasing situation here. If I pick like x equal to two here, if I plug two into this here, that's gonna make that big enough where it's actually um, negative. And so that means we're decreasing. So by the first derivative test, what do we know? We go from increasing to decreasing. So what do I have here at 1.6? I have a relative maximum. Why do I know that? Because um, this is a, a, a cubic, which is defined as a polynomial for all real numbers. So that means that 1.6 is actually something I can plug into the uh, function and therefore a relative max exists. Now I know that uh, we're going downhill on this interval, but if I plug in like x equal to, I don't know, 20, that's gonna get really big really fast, right? So this term, this negative term here isn't gonna be stronger than that term is. So that's gonna be positive there. And you can plug in yourself a number that's greater than 4.9, and you'll see that you get a positive derivative. So that means that we're increasing there. So we go from decreasing to increasing, which happens to be a relative minimum, okay? So now what we need to do, we need to test these values here. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to maximize the area. We're not trying to minimize the area, right? So just based off of the first derivative test, I know that this is probably gonna work, but we need to make sure that the values actually work, okay? So let's look at this one for a second, 4.9. So if x was equal to 4.9, what would that mean that this side would have to be? Well, if I plug a 4.9 in, um, guess what? Negative two times 4.9 is gonna be a negative number that's bigger than this, which actually makes this side negative. Can I have a negative side here? There's no such thing as negative distance. That doesn't even make sense. If I solve this inequality here for x, I get x is in the realm from zero, gotta be something greater than zero, but less than 4.25. So it's actually impossible to have a side um, here, an x value that's bigger than 4.25, okay? So um, if you had an x value bigger than 4.25, then what it's saying is it would actually extend out more than half of the distance right there, okay? And if you extend out more than half this way and more than half this way, then you're actually talking about a negative distance now. So this tells me that negative 4.9 can't even be a real solution. It doesn't even make sense, okay? Now what about 1.6? 1.6, when I plug this in, see I already know it's a relative max by the first derivative test. If I plug in a 1.6 here, okay? So I have 11 minus two times 1.6, and I have a 1.6, and then I have an 8.5 minus 2 times 1.6, okay? So if I do all that math there, I'm going to get three dimensions that whenever I multiply it out, that's going to get me 66.144, okay? So if I wanted to, I could, I could actually do this in my calculator. Um, let's try it. So... Eight point five minus two times one point six, so that gets me five point three, and I have eleven minus two times uh, one point six, and that gets me seven point eight. So I have one point six times five point three times seven point eight, and that gets me the one or the sixty six point one four four inches cubed that I desired. Okay. So hopefully this uh, kind of cool example, um, and if you want to, you can take a sheet of paper and then cut out a corner 
and each corner that you cut out make it 1.6 inches and if you do that and you fold up the edges you'll see what actually the box is maximized their volume okay